Welcome back. We're now taking a look at today's beauty shot or Sky Eye 2 drone captured an aerial view of the Mon River and the city. A gorgeous shot there. Let us know where you like to go on our Talk Pittsburgh Facebook page. We love sending our photographer Scott Danka out to capture beautiful shots and we'd like to get out to your favorite too. Tomorrow, Grow Pittsburgh is throwing a pawpaw party. You will be able to sample the local fruit while learning how it's tied to a butterfly that hasn't been seen in Pittsburgh for, for the last 100 years. A butterfly ambassador and the woman behind this effort, Gabrielle Marsden, joins us now. I love fist bumping. You are, you're really, you're really the catalyst to getting this tree and the fruit and the butterfly back. Yes, I am, pretty much as far as Pittsburgh's concerned. Um, there are people working on it in other states, mm -hmm. but as far as I know, I'm the first person to talk about this. And I've been talking to, oh, lots of different nonprofits, including no, uh, Grow Pittsburgh and um, Allegheny Land Trust and so on. And Gabrielle, for people who don't know what a pawpaw fruit is or a pawpaw tree, this is, you said this was locally sourced. You got this yes. today or, or yes, over I did the weekend? Today. today. Look at this. Um, it's, it's highly perishable, unfortunately, um, because it's, which is one reason why it's become unknown. Um, but uh, what can I tell you about it? Yeah, so why it's highly perishable, it doesn't, it ripens and then rots pretty quickly or? Yeah, yeah, it goes bad pretty quickly. Like, like here you can see this guy, this was collected today, but it's kind of brown. Actually, some people like pawpaws when they're like this. They have a more um, caramel flavor than, than this guy here. And this um, is what it looks like on the inside. Oh, it's really soft. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's one of those fruits where you have to be careful what you consume um, because the seeds are actually kind of poisonous. In fact, you can use the seeds. They still use them to cure lice on people. They're a natural insecticide. Get out! Yeah. What do you do? You rub the seeds on your head or how do you... How well, they, they have to process them and grind them up and all this stuff, which is why you don't want to grind them up when you eat them. Yeah. So, like, here we have some pawpaw puree, which I, I made just before I got here. And I was very careful to make sure that there are no seeds in that, because if you eat a seed, well, it, let's just say it'll keep you regular. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good to know. It's good to keep in your back pocket, maybe. This looks like baby food. Can I try it? Is it Absolutely. Okay, I just want to, I've never tried a pawpaw, and yeah, definitely yeah. not the puree. This, this is actually a good way to store it. If you make some pawpaw puree, then you can freeze it and keep it for like six months or something like that. It's where, sweet. Where it's, yes, it is. It's very sweet. In fact, it, it's really great in mixed drinks. Like if you take like a cup of that with a couple ounces of whiskey and just a, a dash of bitters, that stuff's well, Let's talk about the zebra swallowtail butterfly. And you have your yes. shirt on and, and like you're showing it off. So tell us why this butterfly is no longer seen in our area, even though we still have some of the pawpaw trees and fruit here. Um, the reason why it, it, it's not here is because the pawpaws that exist here are too far apart. However, if you go about an hour drive from Pittsburgh to the south and the east and the west, then you find lots and lots of pawpaws and, and the zebra swallowtail start showing up. And I was hoping you can explain something because people may not know this, but I, when I was reading an article about the pawpaw, one of the things they looked at was how it actually pollinates, how you can, the seeds spread. Okay. They think that some animals don't carry them as far and that might be why they're spread out. Yes, yes. Basically, they co-evolved with various megafauna, including mastodons, um, giant ground sloths, giant beavers, camels, etc. And uh, they don't exist anymore. They disappeared about uh, 10,000 years ago. And then afterwards, it's, it's believed that the native people dispersed them further. So if you find them north of glacial areas, like in Ontario, yeah, they, they are up in Canada too. So this is not the limit of where they exist. Then, then there's lots of pawpaw trees and thus the butterfly too. Um, but since uh, we, we don't typically plant them, which I hope to change, and the megafauna doesn't exist anymore, then um, we need to actively collect the seeds. Plant them. Which is a little messy, and yeah. But I, I just wanna note something for anybody that forages for pawpaws. Yeah. If you collect the seeds, you have to keep them wet and cold stratified. So you can take like a bunch of seeds. I would clean them off. Actually, let me just clean this off real quick. Oh, you're just gonna, oh, there you go. You really do love the pawpaw, don't you? Yeah. And just like that. Yeah, well, it's not <laughs> as clean as it could be, but you take this, 
You put it in a little Ziploc bag with a damp paper towel. Keep it in your refrigerator. Don't let it dry out. If, you, if it dries out, it will die like within 48 hours or something wow. like that. Wow, it's so fickle. Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why it's become so rare Right, is because of that. Well, thank you so much for coming on and telling us more about the Paw Paw Fruit and your mission here. And if you want to get involved and help out, the Paw Paw Party is tomorrow at the Garden Dreams Urban Farm and Nursery in Pittsburgh. Also, it runs from 4.30 to 6.30. Okay, I was, I was going to say one more week after that. And then there's another one. If you can't make it tomorrow, there's a second Paw Paw Party, and that is next Tuesday the 19th, same time and place. The event is free. The donations towards restoring the butterfly are welcome.